Michael, isn't it? I'm Quentin. I am Michael, your mum's cousin. Is that your BMW outside? Aye, it is, aye. Oh, that's flash. I don't think anyone else in our family's got a car that flash. How can you afford it? <laughs> I'm still paying it off, man. You know, I got a really strange surprise today. The phone rang. The guy says, it's Roger and it's your time to display your art in my cafe. Oh, really? I thought it was my sister's friend Mark mucking about. Because the other week I'd been teasing him all night and he got his own back by leaving a message the next morning saying that Sarchi and Sarchi had rang to display my artwork. Aye. And <laughs> the guy got all stiff up a lip and said, I'm not Mark, I'm Roger. And I don't care about your personal life. Do you want to display your artwork or not? How did you feel? Embarrassed. Ah, no, don't be embarrassed, man. You're only trying to explain the confusion. You know, I, I get nervous about displaying my art, artwork in cafes. Why did? Well, you know, you, you go into the cafe to speak to the manager, and all, there's all those customers there. You might say no, and you've got all those customers there. And they're, you know, they might see your rejection and... Ah, what does it matter what they think? Well, uh, yeah. You know, one thing that I picked about you, right, and I noticed about you, is you really care what people think about you, yeah? Well, uh, yeah, maybe I do, yeah. Well, on one hand, nothing wrong with that. But look at it this way, like, if everyone worried too much about what other people thought, no one would get on to do things. Yeah, I see what you mean, but explain further. Well, take like the Olympics and take like the long jump, right? And you're allowed three no goals at it, right? And there's thousands of people in the audience watching, right? And also millions of people at home watching as well, right? And then they have their third goal and see if they miss again. Say, for example, right? Because they put their foot in the wrong place and then they get disqualified and they're not allowed to do it again for another four years. They keep practicing in their spare time and they don't say, okay, what? Well, I, I feel so ashamed for all these people. I'm now gonna take up say, tennis, for example. They do it because it's their passion. And when it comes around to doing it again, they do it in front of all those people all over again, millions of people watching at home on the telly, thousands of people watching in the audience. And they do it because it's their passion. They, they, they're like, I'm doing it because it's my passion and you can think what you like. Yeah. What a brilliant way to look at it. So my advice to you, right, is if you like your work and you're confident about your work, don't worry about what others think. Yeah, good thinking. Brilliant attitude. Talking about sport, do you watch their wrestling? You know, WWF. It's good. Well, you know, I know that. I'm not stupid, obviously. I tell you what, next time I see you, why don't I get a football and we'll have a kick around? Ah, sounds great to me, man. Looking forward to Berlin Gap tomorrow, Michael. Ah, he sounds champion to me, like. You know who you remind me of? Jimmy Nail. You're too dark and you've got the same accent. <laughs> Aye. You know my fa favourite part of our feeder same pet? It's when Jimmy Nail keeps on antagonising the Germans. And no one knows why. And then later on in the episode, he has a fight with a German. And Dennis, the peacemaker, he says, you know, why are you always antagonising people? What have you got against Germans anyway? Then he organises a dance match with the Germans. I, I, I know, I've seen it. I think I know what you mean, like. Yeah. And then he organises a dance match with the Germans as a peace offering. And Jimmy now says, it might just be a dance match, but we better thrash the Germans. And the other guy's like, why? And he says, because they're... Because they're, they're the bastards who born our granny. I know, I've seen it. <laughs> I was looking forward to saying that line.
Right, Michael. I, I champion, I. What was it like growing up in Newcastle? Was it rough? Well, not... Well, not as rough as it's portrayed, like. But I could tell you a story or two about some rough places, like. Oh, yeah, like what? Well, there was this rough pub near me, right? Where I lived, right? And this lady got killed in it. story true that you told me last night about the lady getting killed with the broom in that crude way? Aye, it was, aye. We miss you can be grubby. We miss you late. Well, you had quite a lot to drink. Aye, I know it. Michael, can I ask you a question? Are you an alcoholic? Me? <laughs> uh, yeah, alright. Hands up, man. You caught me out. Yeah, I'm alcoholic. You know, why did you drink all that booze last night and tell me that story about the lady getting killed? Well, you asked us, what is it like growing up in Newcastle? Was it rough? And I said, well, it's not as rough as it's portrayed, but I can tell you a story or two about some rough places. And you said, yeah, like what? Oh, wow. Good memory. I'm surprised you can remember so well after all that drink. You know, the story was a bit crude. I I know, but you asked. You should have asked a question and you only answer. I know. Well, was it rough growing up in Newcastle? Oh, oh no, man. We're not going to do that again. The last time you asked us, I told you the truth and you went tell your mum and you got us in trouble. I know, I'm sorry about that. I didn't mean to get you in trouble. It was a shock, that's all. You know, the story was gruesome. Aye, gruesome aye. So, is that what you do? You get drunk and talk about things to get them off your chest? Well, it's just talking the truth. No truth is the truth. You can't argue with the truth. You know, some people get drunk, they get lazy. Some people get drunk, get happy. Some people get drunk, get sad. Me, I just get drunk and just tell the truth. And the truth's the truth, and you cannot argue with the truth. Yeah, I guess. No. It was funny last night when you said if anyone came on the bus and was funny or untoward you, you'd stick your finger up and say swift on that. And my mum came and heard you saying that. <laughs> I, I know, I. Uh, I know. <laughs> I'm so proud you're one of my family. You're such fun. You're like a brother I never had. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever had a dream come true? Me? I, you're the thing. What, oh, really? Well, tell us then. Well, I was riding on a ride in a motorbike. Harley Davidson, my favourite motorbike ride. I, I thought you couldn't ride anymore. Aye, I know, but I dreamt that I could and I could afford it in a dream. Oh, right. I knew the dream, right? I was his in Minder with Gary Webster, a very good actor, right? And George Cole was in the corner and I was starstruck, right? Right. And I said, what about him? What's his life? Right. And Gary Webster said, no, don't worry about him. It's your line that's important, implying I was more important than the legendary George Cole. I was more important than one of my favourite actors, George Cole. Oh, wow. <laughs> Aye, oh, wow, indeed. But, uh, hang on a minute. What about your dreams coming true? These dreams only come true in your dreams. Exactly. 
lovely dreams have come true in my dreams. So therefore my dreams come true. So it's my realities I have trouble with. It's my realities that don't come true. Mm -mm. Interesting way of looking at it. Well, let me try it sometime. Just think, right? No one can take it back away from you. You can dream all what you like, no matter how extraordinary, right? There's no limits, right? And it can come true in your dream. So you dream about it, so it comes true because it's your dream. So, that dream about Minder, does that mean you feel that you need a Minder? Who do you ever dream about me? No, I don't need to dream about you. Why not, Lee? It's obvious, isn't it? Uh, no. I don't need to dream about you because you've always come true. You know, to answer your question, about Minder, yeah, I would like a Minder. But in my case, it'd be called a killer. Because you know what it noise that gets killed? Oh, really? Nah. Don't get so excited, man. I'm only kidding. I'm only pulling your leg. Hey, and don't go tell your mum that I want to go and get people killed. You get us in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> ah.